Good morning, panelists. Good morning, our research advisor. Um, we, the researchers, would like to present to you our um, research study entitled Increasing Students' Level of Knowledge on Sexually Transmitted Infection Using Short Term. Uh, I would like to introduce to you our uh, research team. So, first, Frankie Resnido and Christine Mendez. Mikey Aison and Aisa Garros, Meryl Gaeta, Cedric Bernardo, James Gando, Rowie Jim Pires, Peter James, and let's go on to the introduction. So in our introduction, so young teenagers are highly involved in rising cases with sexually transmitted infections or STIs. Each year, 20 million new cases are reported. Half of these infections is among people age 15 to 24, and they can have long-term consequences by Johnson 2019. This means that they are most often but are not exclusively spread by, spe by sexual intercourse, HIV, genital herpes, genital warts, gonorrhea, some forms of hepatitis, and syphilis are STIs. A great deal of uncertainty surrounds the global and regional estimates of incidence and prevailing of STIs. STIs transmitted through vaginal, anal, oral, or any sexual contact, and these infections can be transferred from person to person without even knowing. The researchers come up to this study to address the concern of rapidly spreading of STIs, especially teenagers. The data analysis of this evidence-based study is to increase the knowledge of students through educational video. The purpose of this study is to know the level of knowledge of senior high school students in Bulosa National High School about sexually transmitted infections. Also, the significance to minimize the STI cases among teenagers and give awareness about the effect of STI. Yes. The objective of this study is to inform and educate teenagers on preventing STIs, lessen the high probability of students engaging on contagious infections. The researchers will use educational video or short film, and questionnaires, specifying the purpose of study in the question of what can be developed to increase students' knowledge on sexually transmitted infection. Next. So next is our methodology. So research design that we use, this study was a descriptive design to assess the knowledge and awareness of senior high students about SDF. Next is uh, the sampling method that we use. The researchers use cluster sampling method by determining the number of respondents in grade 11 senior high, which should be picked by population or section, specifically grade 11 STEM. The target respondent of this research study is senior high students in Polos National High School, regardless of their age and their knowledge about SDI. The researcher's instrument use is questionnaires, which is 20 items that are relevant and on identifying the degree of knowledge of teenagers about STIs. After the response or the data connect collected was analyzed by the statistical program Microsoft Excel, descriptive statistics was used to organize, interpret, and communicate the data by Paulette and Beck 2010. The questionnaire is made out of primarily substantial questions and the data was analyzed mainly with sample t-tests that compare scores of the same variable at the next at the same groups of cases. It is a one time comparing and measuring the same variable. So this is the results and discussion. This is the students' performance, our uh, data. So this is the table. So table one shows the score of every student for the pretest, which is the orange one, and post test, which is the blue. The X is the pretest and the Y is the poses. Simply X minus Y. The table one shows the difference on the score gained by the students using questionnaire before and after the short term. So as you can see, the pretest was about uh, have a total score of 205 of all 19 students, and the post test was about 279. So this is the difference between pretest and the post-test. So the table two represents the mean of the post-test that is higher than the pretest, then the degrees of freedom which can be defined as the total number of observations minus the number of independent constraints. 
the p value which measures the size of the difference relative to the variation in sample data. T is simple, simply calculated difference represented in units in standard error and cohex D, the researchers divide the mean difference by the standard deviation 0 0.84 is larger than 0 0.6. So this can be classified so this can be classified as a large difference. The short term is very effective, increasing the learnings and knowledge of Bolusa National High School students. The study is parallel to the study of Wanda Allen by 2017. Uh, because she also used an educational video to determine the knowledge of students if the video or film increases the learnings and awareness of the respondents about STIs. Therefore, our study is essential since it can be used by the Ed or CHED to reduce the probability of another STI case occurrence among teenagers. Also, the short film about sexual transmitted infection is effective because the result of our study has increased the knowledge of students about the said issue. So finally, our conclusion, in accordance with the data analysis and average rate the researchers got in the, res in the results of the pre and post test, this study showed that senior high school students in Bulusa National High School have exceeded 50% of 20 items after showing the short film. 47.36% of students make it to the passing score of 15 items. This study indicates that Bulusa National High School students have partial knowledge of about STI and improved after showing the short film. Their attitude showed that they had very little mistakes on all tests regarding these issues. The short film is a widely accessible intervention to decrease risk involvement and to inform teenagers about sexual transmitted infections. Our film is effective because senior high students in Bolusa National High School have gained more knowledge based on our data analysis. So, thank you. Any questions? You film it now. You may take your seat. No. President, our leader. Co 
Research Council, Educating for Science, Mathematics, and Technology. Mathematics is a critical component that must be strictly and seriously tackled so that mathematical foundation can be elaborate more and can provide skills and knowledge for the students to reach success. So, the main purpose of this study is to increase the student's academic performance and change their negative perspective towards the subject. Our objective is to identify and determine the effectiveness of peer tutoring in enhancing the ability and learning in mathematics of grade 8 students, specifically to know the validity of peer tutoring as a strategy to empower the students' mathematical literacy and to evaluate and and compare the performance and the ability of the students to solve mathematical problems and compare the effectiveness of the peer tutoring as a strategy even if they improve or not. Methodology. This chapter deals with the process and the, analy the analysis of the data collected first the research design the researchers use an experimental research design which is one group is upper spanish is, is fully controlled by the researcher as for the experiment next is the respondent the researcher used a proposed sampling method where the grade Eight students are purposely picked according to their average in mathematical subject. Then the research instrument. The researcher used the pre-test and post-test as the as the research instrument consisting of 26 multiple choice questions of basic fundamentals of mathematics operation of fractions, loss of exponent, integers, and operation of polynomials. Next is the gathering of data. Before conducting the tutorial, the researcher made a letter to the principal to, to ask permission to allow the peer tutorial. Second, the researcher conducted a, met, a meeting to the students and with their parents to, to inform them and convince them to attend to this two-week tutorial. Then a pretest was given to them to to know the, the difficulties of the students. Then, the peer tutorial started at January 6 to January 28, 2020 at 4 to 5 p.m. Then a post-test was given to finally evaluate the data. And for the token of appreciation, the researchers gave a program with the help of Miss Dirty Bravo to end the tutorial session. Data analysis procedure. The researcher used a pair of sample t tests to find out if there is a if there is a significant difference before and after me. Coins B indicates the standardized difference, which is 0 0.2 is small effect size, 0 0.5 is medium and 0 0.8 above is a large effect size. Now, results and discussion. We can see that blue is the pretest and the pink one signifies the post-test. 
The student seven got the higher post test, followed by the student 12, 13, 15, 1, and 2. Now, in this table, we can see the pretest and post test using paired sample t test. The, post, the mean post test is 11.73, is greater than the mean pretest 6.87. The degree of freedom is 14. The t value 8.86 is greater than t critical 1.76. And the points d is 0 0.91, indicating that it is a large effect size. The t step. The T stat value is negative 4.82, is less than the 0 0.05 significance of level of significance, and suggests that the null hypothesis is rejected. This is this result is parallel to the study of Asaf Nawas and Sahur Oreman. So we will now go to question and answer. Seven minutes is already done. Please, before you answer, please introduce yourself. For example, um, halimba, nag-question. Halimba, si Alaika. Alaika Tanyo, tapos bago kayo mag-answer para ma-identify ko dito. You may quest ask question panels. 